Oklahoma State University livestock marketing specialist Daryl Peel is our cattle market analyst this week. We'll soon get the latest glimpse of the cattle industry as the USDA releases its July cattle report on Friday the 24th. January's cattle report showed an inventory 1% higher than the previous year. Farmers and ranchers attempting to rebuild herds have benefited from adequate moisture across many states. In fact, the country's pasture and ranges are in the second best condition on record. But international demand remains weak. U.S. beef and veal exports for the month of May were down more than 14 percent from May 2014. We started by asking why when we talked with Darrell Wednesday morning. Well, I think on the beef side, it's a combination of the fact, of course, that with the tight supplies in the U.S., we've got uh, essentially record prices. We're very close to record levels uh, for, for cattle and for beef. And, uh, and, and, and then we add on top of that the strong dollar that we've had. Uh, that uh, discourages exports, makes our products even more expensive in the international markets, and it actually favors imports. And so we're seeing the impact of both of those factors right now in terms of the beef trade. Do you think that can rebound? Well, I think it will. I mean, obviously, uh, it, it depends on what happens on both of those fronts. So we're keeping an eye on the, uh, the, the strength of the dollar. Um, it, it's kind of uh, leveled out. I won't say it's moderated, and it probably won't. There's still quite a bit of uncertainty in the, in the global e uh, macroeconomic environment. Uh, but it has stopped appreciating, at least. It's kind of uh, holding steady, and, and so that at least uh, stops uh, any additional pressure or it reduces additional pressure. Record prices in the U.S. are going to continue for some time, so uh, we'll continue to struggle a little bit in that respect. Well, you're touching on this then. The next question, how would you describe cattle market prices both live and feeder? Well, I think, you know, on a, on a big picture view, on an annual basis, this is kind of a side, sideways year. Uh, in 2014, we had this tremendous appreciation across all of the cattle and beef markets. Uh, to get to these levels, uh, we're moving more sideways this year. Uh, holding pretty steady. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, whether we look at wholesale beef prices, retail prices have continued to increase so far. Uh, and, you know, fed cattle prices, feeder cattle prices uh, have generally moved more sideways than anything this year. What does that mean for margins first in the feedlot and for the packer? Well, again, uh, you know, our margin operators, especially the feedlots and packers, both continue to struggle a bit. Uh, feedlots have had the worst end of the deal for many months and that continues right now with uh, with more strength on the feeder cattle prices uh, that they're buying. Uh, they've, they've done lots of things the last few months to try to minimize that impact by holding on to cattle a bit longer, feeding them to heavier weights so they don't have to go out and buy new, more expensive cattle. But they're going to continue to struggle. The margins really will, uh, will be very tight for them. Packers, it's a little more of a short-term thing in terms of uh, uh, you know, week to week kinds of things. They don't own product as long typically. Uh, and so their margins have been a little more up and down. One of the things that's impacted packer margins this year uh, has been the fact that we've seen significant weakness in the byproducts value this year. What about for the cow calf producer? You know, again, cow calf producers in the driver's seat, all eyes are really on the cow calf sector because the market is, is providing this tremendous incentive to regrow the cow herd. Uh, you know, because of the drought and other things over the last few years, we've gotten a lot smaller than we intended to be. Uh, we got those prices up there last year and, we, and we're responding this year, uh, but it's going to continue for some period of time. So cow calf producers there, stocker producers uh, generally have a pretty favorable margin, although uh, again, they are a margin operation, so you have to look at that a, a little more. Uh, uh, like the feedlot side, but from a forage based standpoint, uh, stocker margins still look uh, reasonably attractive. The USDA's, USDA's cattle inventory report is next Friday. What do you expect it will show? Well, we're anticipating, of course, that it will confirm uh, continued herd expansion. We started herd expansion finally in 2014 with about a 2% increase in the beef cow herd. Um, you know, uh, the extent of that, we may push it to uh, some very strong levels this year, but I, I think there's little doubt that we will see, um, you know, more heifers, more replacement heifers in the inventory report um, and, and, you know, uh, a, a squeeze generally or at least steady feeder cattle supplies. We did have an increase in the herd last year, so, you know, we're expecting some increase in the, in the calf crop in, in uh, 2015, but when you balance that against uh, the fact that we're going to save more of the heifer calves out of that for, for expansion, uh, we probably won't see a big change in feeder cattle supplies. What, what do you think it will show down in Oklahoma and Texas where drought has significantly been reduced? You know, I, I, we saw a surprisingly large expansion last year, uh, really more than I expected in those in, the, in that area, particularly down in Texas. We've had a lot of change this year. 
Uh, so I am looking for very, very aggressive expansion uh, in, in, in some areas. I think on a nationwide basis, you know, we could see this thing jump up. Uh, you know, three to four percent expansion is, is certainly possible this year. Uh, that's not something we normally do for very many years in a row if you go back and look at, uh, you know, cattle cycles historically, but it's certainly possible this year for sure.